Hello everyone. Let us continue to look at one of the you know interesting passive device. Well, we call it passive device, but we also use it in active configuration as well. So, this is called Maxender interferometer. So, there are multiple uh, interferometers uh, you know proposed and demonstrated right. Uh, there, is, there is a long list of things that you might have studied in your introduction to photonics course. Uh, but here um, one of the practical uh, uh, you know architecture that one can use for a lot of interesting applications is um, Maxender interferometer. So, this was um, named after uh, you know uh, pair who came up with, uh, uh, with this particular configuration. So, let us look at how uh, this uh, Maxender interferometer works. Uh, particularly uh, in this you know uh, device, uh, it is not a, a fundamental device. Okay. So, we are going to construct it from whatever we, uh, we just studied in the earlier uh, lectures. There are, two there are two ways to do this. Uh, we, will con we will look at the, the, the two implementation. One is by using uh, directional couplers, uh, very simple directional couplers uh, and then the next configuration is by using Y splitters and Y combiners. So, let us look at these two configurations and then see uh, you know what are all the interesting um, uh, realization that we can do uh, with this Maxender uh, interferometer. So, let us look at that. So, we all know uh, interference right. So, this is uh, a special kind of interferometer. So, mark Zender meter called M is that I. So, in short this is what we use. So, the configuration is, is rather straightforward. So, uh, let me do a, a simple skeletal diagram there. So, you have a single input and you split this input into two. So, we can split this and you allow them to propagate and you could make an additional length for one. So, there is delta L and then we put it together back again and this is the output. So, you have E. So, you have E 1 and E 2 and now you are going to put E 1 plus E 2 right. So, so this is this is basically the configuration. So, when you do not have this particular section, we call this as balanced Maxender. So, when delta L equal to 0, we call this as balanced configuration and if delta L is not equal to 0, we call that unbalanced. So, what is this particular delta L is going to do? So, this is going to have additional phase. So, when the light is propagating through a medium, the length determines you know what is the phase accumulation that this particular wave has right. So, additional distance it travels, it is going to have some additional phase right. So, what is the implication of that phase here? Um, let us let us look at the effect of this delta phi right. So, this is simple interference right uh, that you see between these two waves. So, the ratio between I out by I in right. So, this is 1 let us say right. So, when the phase difference is 0, when the phase difference is 0, you will have maximum and it is going to go down and up and down and up. So, wherever you have pi phase difference right you are going to completely um, destructively interfere you will want that. So, when you have 2 pi you are back and 3 pi you will have same thing again right. This is a, a, a simple cosine function right. So, this is how uh, a simple Maxender interferometer works. 
So, how can we implement this by using integrated optical devices or in a waveguide geometry? So, in a waveguide geometry, we take a very simple waveguide, we put out a Y splitter and then we allow it to propagate through a waveguide section and then we can combine this. So, this is basically your Maxender interferometer using wire waveguide. So, this is all single mode in configuration. In this case, delta phi is 0. You can see here there is no difference between these two. So, all got their own widths. This is all identical width. So, this will always have as you know um, as a function here right. So, there is no phase difference they will always have high signal. So, their interference is going to be always be constructive in nature right. So, let us write this um, uh, delta phi right as a function of waves that are propagating through this two different um, uh, arms let us say. Okay. So, let us assume that they are not you know out of same uh, material or same system right. So, we could we could have two different uh, refractive indices let us say right. So, um, let us say there is a, a change in the refractive index here. So, I can I can call this as you know waveguide 1 and let us say this is 2 all right. So, now this has um, a different refractive index let us say right. So, this has n dash and this is n let us say. So, now there is a difference in, in, in this particular geometry and if that is the case your uh, delta phi is not any more 0. So, it is going to be non-zero and what is that phase difference is going to be? Let us say from branch 1. So, this is our first branch as a function of length L right. So, this is the length that we have for both right. This is also L right. So, now it is K naught n effective as a function of L right dL. So, if it is just you know the single number we can just say n effective k naught n effective minus the second arm. So, this is upper arm this is lower arm k naught n effective dash into dl. So, you could have a section of this with slightly different index and that should be taken care by this all right. So, this is how your phase will change right. So, phase change this delta phi is going to follow this particular relation between two arms the upper arm and then lower arm right. So, now um, you can actually find out what this is by simplifying this. So, k naught is, is constant right we are going to use the same wavelength and the length is also identical here L right. So, gen, then the, the general case here for the delta phi is nothing but k naught L delta n effective. So, this delta n effective is what will create this phase difference ok. So, this is the phase difference equation that you should keep in mind ok. So, ok phase difference is this how about the power difference. So, whether there will be you know output power that will be affected by this phase yes of course, this i out by i in we drew this one. So, let, let, let us put that into a proper format here. So, p out that is the power out will be equal to half p 
be in times 1 minus cos delta phi right or in other form p in cos squared delta phi by 2. So, this is the identity right. So, this is how your output power will change when delta phi is not 0. So, it will reduce the output power. So, this is again an important relation that you would want to remember right keep that in mind. So, now um, as I mentioned you can also implement this by using a directional coupler. So, we have easily implemented this using a y splitter right. So, here you are splitting and here you are combining. So, if you remember uh, in our y splitter discussion when there is a phase uh, uh, a complete phi phase difference right between these two you will uh, not be able to couple the light out they will all leak out. Look at it what is happening here the same thing here when phi is uh, the phase difference is pi right then there is a complete leakage of power and the power out will go to 0 right and that is exactly what is happening here ok. So, when there is a phase difference of pi right then there is a destructive interference and you will not see any light going through the waveguide ok. So, whatever we learn there we are applying it here now. So, let us look at uh, how one can use the directional coupler uh, approach. So, we are going to build um, uh, a directional coupler based uh, you know so, so Max Zender um, interferometer using directional coupler. So, let us uh, look at it what we can do better when it comes to directional couplers. So, the directional couplers you have one coupler here and it can go through and then the other coupler like this. So, you have one coupler here and then it goes out and then the other coupler right. So, this is one configuration. So, now you are putting your power in this particular arm. So, when it is a 50-50 splitter then you will have modes going into these two right. So, they will be propagating through right as minus pi by 4 and pi by 4 right and when they reach here again pi by 4 and minus pi by 4 and when they combine they will come out this side ok. So, this is what we call the crossed state cross state propagation. So, this is how a simple directional coupler uh, where you have 50 50 coupling and you do not have any change in the phase at all right. So, here delta phi equals to 0 ok. So, let us take a scenario where your delta phi is pi right. So, that is our other scenario. So, in that scenario let us look at how we can do this. So, again I am going to launch it from the top right. In this case delta phi is equal to pi let us say and how am I doing this? I am doing some changes here right. I am I will briefly come to that how I can change it in a minute, but then I can change this particular section. I can do anything I want. So, I can change the length or I can you know change the property of wave wave guide there. So, now um, I am putting the same light through here and uh, I am getting a 50 50 splitting and I can get the light here and here. So, now the phase is pi by 4 minus pi by 4 right simple as that, but now I have an additional pi pi here right. So, that pi minus pi by 4 is what I am going to get here and here it is nothing but pi by 4. Now, in this scenario the light is going to come out at this end in what we call the bar state 
right. So, this is the this is the bar state all right. So, by using directional couplers you can see here now I can switch between the two different outputs here I can either go on the top or I can go to the bottom waveguide here. So, how did I do that I just changed the the face that I have here ok. So, the way is to change the face now. So, this is this gives you some face pi, but how to change phase is the question to ask here. So, when you take a very simple waveguide it has a certain refractive index n right and you will propagate through this with certain beta. So, now what are all the uh, possible ways to change this right. One way to do this is by using thermo optic effect. So, that means your refractive index is a function of temperature when the temperature changes the refractive index would change. So, you can locally heat this um, and that will result in change in the refractive index ok and that change in the refractive index would result in change in propagation constant and you are you will have some phase difference here all right. So, you can achieve this to thermo optic effect d n over d t you can locally heat this by using micro heaters. Okay. So, in in the following you know uh, uh, lectures I think later on we have a section talking about uh, application and also um, you know different platforms. So, there I am going to show you um, real case studies I am going to show you how we can use this um, heaters um, micro heaters and show you how the response of this particular Maxender changes right. We are going to see practical examples there, but in this case we are just looking at the concept and theory behind this ok. So, the concept here is using thermo optic effect that you can apply. The second way to do that is by change the length changing propagation length right. So, this is this is permanent this is permanent right uh, while in a micro heater case this is tunable right. You can apply the, the, the amount of um, uh, current flowing through this micro heater you can do that, but in this case it is permanent right. And the other way that you can do this is by using uh, for example, electro optic effect So, here we know that epsilon is a function of electric field right. So, that means your refractive index could be changed as a function of electric field. So, by applying um, uh, the necessary electric field you should be able to change the refractive index right. So, when the refractive index changes everything changes your propagation constant changes and your effective refractive index here also changes resulting in change in your phase. So, um, the another way to do this um, is by expose changing the environment or waveguide clad or environment. So, here uh, I will just take a cross section. So, this is the waveguide with n 1 and you have n 2 right. So, you have a certain beta propagating through this medium ok. So, there is a certain beta associated with this, but then if I put um, a ref a different refractive index on top like there is n um, n 3 on top then the beta is going to change now. And by changing this 
um, uh, cladding index right from let us say N 3 to N 4 you are going to change the effective refractive index. So, this will have an implication in change in N effective all right because if, if you remember effective refractive index capture not only the, uh, the, the, the geometric property, but also the environment that the waveguide is sitting. So, this is the property we use for sensing useful for sensing application. Okay. So, we, we change the environment when we change the environment the n effective changes. So, when you change the n effective your phase also changes um, um, we have this n effective here you see here. So, when we change the n effective you will change the phase here as well. Okay. So, that is another way of uh, doing this um, phase difference and finally, you can do all optical. This is reasonably hard right um, that will invoke nonlinear process right. So, this uses nonlinear process. Um, so, wherein you use light to change the refractive index of light right. So, you know you have real part um, and the imaginary part of, uh, of light sorry. Um, n naught plus i k in this case, but then even this n naught this could be a function of the intensity right. So, this could be a function of uh, light intensity and based on this light intensity you could change the refractive index. So, this is part of you know the uh, utilizing nonlinear properties in the waveguide to do this. This is not this, this can be very small for some material and this can be large for other material they based on the material property, but the bottom line is you can do this, but you need higher power. So, you need um, high intensity of light for this right. So, the usual way that we do is through thermo optic or electro optic right um, and you can also do uh, by uh, changing the environment which we normally use it for sensing application, but permanently changing your length uh, this is something that we use to realize filters right. So, fixed uh, spectral filters. So, this is again you know examples that we will see in the case studies. Um, once we um, you know go into the application discussion later on in the course ok. So, so far this is this is all um, I would like to um, you know show uh, it to you guys um, on uh, the use of uh, Max Zender interferometers and also understanding how you can build this Max Zender interferometer by simply using a splitter uh, and a combiner right attached with a simple waveguide. And uh, you can create this uh, phase change by applying, uh, you know, uh, change in length, or applying heat, or applying field. Um, in some cases, uh, applying high intensity uh, light uh, itself. So by doing this kind of um, phase tuning, you can realize um, uh, very interesting spectral properties, uh, spectral characteristics and you can also use this as a switch that we saw by using directional couplers at the input and output end by changing the phase in the arm. We can either put it at the bar or it could put it at the cross. So, uh, one can exploit this functionality uh, for many application um, uh, that you desire. So, with that thank you for listening.